Hey guys, how's it going? Justin Melson here, and today I want to show you guys how I did the sound mixing and sound design for my latest short film in Gore Road. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at a general overview on how to do sound mixing for an action sequence, and in this particular case, it is going to be a war sequence. So without further ado, let's check out what we're going to be mixing. So we are just a couple of days away from deadline. The film needs to be done by the 29th, which technically means the 27th or the 26th would be nice because those would be two contingency days in case my computer decides to crap out. You never know. So what's going on right now is I'm a bit behind, unfortunately, but that's kind of expected. Essentially what this entire process is, is I'm recording Foley, which is sounds of, for example, I've got some pants here. And I just, in front of the mic, I just simply try to emulate the sound of whatever it is I'm trying to do. So let's say if somebody's getting shot, I might do like a. Shit. So right now I am in the process of doing uh, one of the militia. He has to get shot a couple times. And his is a bit unique because he was shot with a um, saw. It needs to sound a little bit more intense than everybody else because all the other militia or the soldiers that get shot, those are kind of more of, uh, at least I'm trying to go about them in a way where it's more of a shock value. So when somebody gets shot in the leg, it's not necessarily, wow, that hurt a lot. It's, oh crap, that came out of nowhere. So that is the process right now. I'll probably be doing ADR and Foley for the next, uh, probably next like 15 to 16, 17 hours or so. And then after that, I continue to work on the mix. The mix is pretty much done. I'm just struggling with a couple of areas that are a bit rough because I don't want to keep using the same sounds over and over. So I'm making new sounds, but then when it comes to automatic gunfire, it gets really difficult because it's like, how do you do ricochets for like automatic gunfire? Like, duh, 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 it's, it's kind of difficult. So I'm trying to make sounds. Shit. So everything is laid out and mixed. I'm just going through every single sound effect and um, to the best of my ability, I'm trying to do some EQing and some uh, compression. Uh, some limiting and just trying to get it to, you know, sound like a theatrical mix. So, with that said, uh, I'll go ahead and get back to it. Just want you to do this quick vlog, guys. So, as you can see here, there is a good amount of sound effects going on. And I'm going to say right off the bat, this is typically, well, I'm not going to say this isn't how you do it. Everybody has different ways of how they do things. But this really wasn't the professional way to go about mixing this scene. The only thing is, is due to budgeting, I knew I was going to be mixing this scene right off the bat going into post-production, so I knew I didn't have to be too organized because, you know, if I'm going to screw somebody over, it's going to be me. <laughs> I'm not, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't send this to a professional mixer to clean up my work because this isn't organized whatsoever. This is just a plethora of different sound effects kind of stacked on top of each other within Premiere. Usually the way I would go about doing it, and I know a lot of other sound mixers go about doing it, is you take... You finish, your, you finish the editorial process, you bake and lock your cut in Premiere, and then you could take that via XML into uh, software like Pro Tools or Audacity, or I'm sorry, Audition, and then you could do your final mix in there, in which you have a lot more tools such as compression, hard limiter, parametric EQ, and all those kind of great tools that you can use to mix your scene. But the way I was working, I was kind of doing a rough mix while I was editing the scene. And then that rough mix turned into a mid mix and then turned into a final mix. And then I was just like, ah, oh, screw it. I'll just, I'll just mix the whole scene in Premiere. So that's just kind of how it came about looking so, uh, so messy. The first thing that kind of goes into mixing a scene like this, and this is all just learned from trial and error and from watching different other, uh, many other different war scenes, such as Black Hawk Down, Saving Private Ryan, and all those other kind of movies. Uh, the first thing that you have to do is mix, <laughs> mix your NAT sound. Those of you guys who don't know what NAT sound is, that's just a 
there's just there's many different words for it, but it's just getting the room tone. It's otherwise known as room tone, nat sound, whatever. It's just getting the ambient sound of your scene. After that, you need to get the Foley. And with this, I did a lot of Foley. We recorded a lot of Foley on set, and I did a lot of Foley recording in my bedroom where the acoustics were pretty good. And then after that, you have to do ADR. In this scene, ADR is pretty minimal because it's kind of hard to emulate someone screaming with bullets running, with bullets uh, bouncing all around them. It's kind of hard to emulate that same effect in your bedroom. So I tried to do all the ADR while we were actually out there on set shooting this scene. And then after that, there's the gun firing sound effects. That's what you'd expect. The M4s, the, M, the saws, the AK-47s, all those different kind of gun effects. Then there's the gun foley for those effects, you know, the bolt, the projectiles, um, shell casings, everything that kind of goes with the gun effect. Because oftentimes people will just do the gun effect. They'll put in a gun sound effect and they'll be like, okay, I'm done. But it's not because sound design and sound mixing is all about layering sounds. There's usually never just one sound. You have to layer sometimes 10, 20, 30 different sounds to achieve that one sound. So on top of that, you have your dirt sound effects. Just the sound sounds, the scene sounds really plain without dirt sounds because they're all up in the dirt. So anytime the bullet hits the ground, the bullets are bouncing off the rocks or anytime they shoot something and let's say you have a shell, a shell casing sound effect, you have to put a dirt sound effect on top of that shell casing sound effect. So you could hear the dirt, you could hear the shell hit the dirt, if that makes any sense. Um, LFE or low frequency effects, you have to do the, for example, depending on how you're mixing this, if you're doing film festivals, or you're going to be putting it in a theatrical in, in a theater, or it's just going on YouTube. I like to add a little bit of low frequency effects, which are just little bass effects that you put whenever something big happens, like a big gunshot or a big explosion. It's just that little girth in the mix. And then after that is touch-ups because after all this, it's probably not going to still, still not going to sound too good. You have to mix the entire thing. So that's with compression, EQing, hard limiters, um, reverb to get it to match the scene and all the different variables that go into mixing this all together. And then that leads us into the final mix down. Like I just said, you have to do your compression and everything that's needed to mix it down properly. And your mix is going to be different depending on where, on what platform it's going to be played on. If you're going to be mixing it for theatrical, you're going to be mixing it a lot different as if it was going on TV or going on YouTube. So with that all said, let's go on ahead and jump right into what I did. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to remix this entire scene because this took me about a week and a half to mix, if not longer. So I'm just going to kind of break down all the different sounds and kind of the process I had while mixing this scene. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So I'm going to show you guys how I mix this little sequence right here. Actually, I'm going to turn this off. So I'm going to show you guys how I mix this whole sequence right here because this is this was the most challenging yet the most fun part of this scene to mix for me because one when you're firing fully automatic gunfire it's pretty difficult to do ricochets for that and so that was a big issue that I had trying to mix all the bombs and everything that goes in this scene and then on top of that mixing like all this dirt sounds all the ricochet sounds and then him firing and having the shell casings come out so it was a difficult yet fun scene to mix so I'm just going to kind of go through and show you guys uh, layer by layer what the sounds are doing. So this is the first layer right here. So this should just be dragging sound effects. And so I don't even remember when we recorded that. I think I may have recorded that separately somewhere else. And so let's see what this one is. Okay, and so those are the bomb sound effects. And like I said, you can't just have bomb sound effects because with that, with just those bomb sound effects, it sounds kind of plain, it sounds kind of boring. So you have to add dirt sounds, you have to add rock sounds to mix with all that. And then another thing I'm gonna say is use the pan tool because that is your friend. Even if you're just doing a 2.1 mix, the pan tool is your friend. So don't be scared to use this pan tool and you could do a lot of different, um, a lot of different effects with this. So if you want it to sound like it's coming from the far right, you can go all the way to 100. If you want it to sound like it's coming from the far left, you can go all the way to negative, whatever. And it works really well because when you're in the movie theater, people want to hear the bullets going all around them. They don't want to hear all the bullets coming from one side because then it's going to sound mono and then it won't sound too fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and look where the fun starts to happen right here. So right now we have these three soloed. So we're just listening to the first three tracks 
and this should be a little bit of gun sound effects, a little bit of foley, a little bit of dirt, and a little bit of grunts. So let's check this out. So it sounds cool, but it sounds a little bit plain. So let's go ahead and add this. So let's see what um, the fourth layer adds to the mix. Shit. And so it sounds obnoxious now, but those little foleys that you hear of him moving and rustling around, it goes a long way because if you don't have that in there, it's just gonna sound plain. It's just gonna sound muted and then it's gonna sound like gun sound effects, but now that we have some foley of him maneuvering and moving his wardrobe and the gun effects, because like I mentioned before, you can't just have a gun sound effect. You can't just have a rifle sound effect. You got to have the bolt. You got to have foley going along with the gun to kind of sell the effect. Okay, so now you're starting to hear the mix down sound just a little bit cleaner. And another reason on how we're able to do that is because you have to have contrast in your sound, just like you have to have contrast in your images. So just like color grading, you can add an S curve and it'll make your footage look a little bit better, usually. The same thing with sound, obviously that goes into EQing and mixing, but it's the same thing with your mids and your highs and your low frequencies. You can't just have a bunch of low to mid weight range frequencies in your mix. It's good to kind of uh, add some variables and kind of add some lower range frequencies and some higher range frequencies. So with that said, you got to add shell casing sounds or if you want to add bolt sounds or whatever you need, or maybe even like a, a Coca-Cola can, a Coca-Cola can just in the mix, just to add a little bit of a higher metal pitch sound. It'll go a long way for your mix. And these are actually my favorite sounds right here because in order to do bullet swoosh sounds, you need to make it sound like the bullet is swooshing through the air and is hitting the object that it's hitting, which is the rock right here. You can't just have a ricochet sound because people are gonna be like, whoa, where'd that come from? Um, usually when a bullet flies past your ear, you're gonna hear it. It's gonna have that tail. It's gonna have that wow sound. So with this, I added a couple coat hanger sound effects along with a couple of other sound effects and kind of modulated them to sound like bullet swooshes. And then I believe I did a pan effect, so it sounds like it's coming from the right side. And then with that, you add, like I said, a couple of swishes. And then this is my favorite sound effect right here. This, I don't even remember where I found. I got really lucky and I found it online in a sound effects library somewhere. And this is a really cool ricochet sound in which I was able to animate it right here using the panner tool. And I was able to animate it from the left side to the right side and it kind of gives it a really cool effect. So let's go ahead and check out the mix now. So again, it's really starting to fill out the scene, but it is still missing a couple of things. And those things are the ambient sounds, the gnat sounds, and more bullet swish sounds. Those really go a long way along with dirt sound effects. So let's go ahead and unsolo these and see what we got. Much better. Now that we're at starting to add a couple of dirt sound effects in there, it's starting to bring the scene to life, but it is still not completely there. Shit. Okay, now I'd say this is about a 90% completed mix, and this is just coming from my expertise. Again, I'm not a professional sound mixer. I don't mix films for a living. This is just... I literally just kind of underwent post-production completely on my own here. So I'm just kind of going off of what I would think would make for what, what I think would make a final mix down. And so we're, it's getting there. You know, you can hear the bullet ricochets. We have some contrast from the highs and the mids and the lows. Um, we could hear his grunts. You could hear the Foley. We can hear the, we could hear the movement of his combat uniform. You can hear the dirt. You can hear the swishes. And I think the only thing we're missing now is just a couple of more minor gun sound effects in the background and a couple more dirt sounds and some grunt sounds and we might be on our way. And at this point, we're on our 17th layer of sound effects. So let's see what we're at right now. Shit. Cover me. 
And to my ears, that sounds about like a completed mix. Not completely, but it is about there. When I say completed mix, I mean having all the layers kind of mixed in roughly. That isn't a completed mix in terms of the compression that goes in. Because if you're looking at, if you're looking right here, you can tell that this is really hot. We're averaging around negative three, negative six, negative zero dB. And so I think what I did to save myself some time and just due to deadlines, because I was trying to get this film into film festivals, is instead of going through this entire scene, because this was a lot of sounds for me to go in and mix, um, instead of going through the entire scene and remixing all the sounds, and mastering them, I think I just went into my master right here and just turned it down <laughs> because you know sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta do it. And I didn't have a prof I didn't have anybody really teach me, so I was just kind of going off of what I thought would be would make the most sense. So with that said, let's see what everything looks like completely mixed in. So could sound better, but, but anyways, this is just a rough crash course on how I mix this scene. I know there wasn't a lot of too much information in terms of how to actually mix because that is, if I were to go over this entire thing, this would be a four to five hour long crash course that I would have to save for another day. But I just figured I'd kind of go through and show you guys the process that I did on how to mix this scene. And I guess some of the mindset behind mixing certain elements that I did, and I guess I'll leave you guys with a few other helpful tips. So one, when it comes to finding sound effects, because I don't want to leave you guys with a tutorial and you're like, well, how do you get the sounds and all that kind of stuff, Justin? Well, first off, half of these sounds in here I made myself. So a lot of these sounds I made using coat hangers, I made using cracked eggs, I made using any variable household objects that I could find, and then I kind of manipulate them to sound like gun effects or gunfire effects. Um, the other half I found pretty much everywhere online. Heck, Heck, I even stole a lot of these sounds. But somewhere in here, I downloaded Black Hawk Down, and then I'll just take some of the sound effects from a guy getting shot in the movie Black Hawk Down, and I'll just kind of clean it up and manipulate it and put it over here. So a lot of this stuff were sounds stolen from other movies that I can kind of re-manipulate to make my own. A lot of this sounds are from Film Riot Sound Effects Pack. A lot of them are just from random gun effects that you find on YouTube. And the other half are from sounds that I made. So that is really the way that I went about doing it. And really it's just a trial and error process. I can't stay here and show you exactly how I mix everything sound by sound, but I feel like if I can kind of give you guys some information on how I do it, you guys can run with that a lot better and make your own movies. So again, if I can leave you guys with one quality tip, it is all about layering sounds. I cannot stress that enough. Layer your NAT sound, your Foley, your ADR. You should have 20 to 30 layers worth of sound effects before you have a completed mix. And I'm not saying that's a golden rule because rules are made to be broken, but that's just the way I think about it. It's good to have 10, 20, 30 layers of sound and then you can start to, you can start to hear it fill out a little bit. And it's the same thing with a uh, bullet ricochet sounds. Like you have to have your swoosh sound. You can, make, you can do that with a coat hanger, do that with um, a pillow. Then you have to have the impact sound, the sound of the bullet hitting the rock. And then after that, you have to have dirt sound effects, just the sounds of dirt and rocks flying around. Uh, and you can mix that in surround sound or however you want to do it. And then leading into the mix, you can usually mix it in 2.1. That's how I mix this film because I don't have the knowledge or equipment to do 5.1 or 7.1. But if you're mixing in 2.1, then make sure you use the pan effect because the pan effect or the panner effect is your best friend. And that'll give you somewhat of a 5.1 experience or give your audience kind of a 5.1 experience. Not really, but you can kind of you can kind of fake it. But anyways, guys, I hope this tutorial taught you guys something. Once again, my name is Justin Melson. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see any other filmmaking things that I have going on. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.